In this video, we're going to do a pretty advanced example of the washer method, so let's go ahead and get started. We have to find the volume of the solid form by rotating the area trapped by y equals sine of x and the x-axis around the line y equals 3 for x between 0 and pi. Okay, so I like to do these in these steps and problems. I like to do these problems in steps because they're pretty much always the same. And the first step you should do is just sketch things out to get an idea of what's going on. And we know that x is between 0 and pi, so I'm just going to draw the positive part of the x-axis. And then we have this line y equals 3, so I'll draw that up here, y equals 3. And then we also know we have uh, sine x, which hopefully at this point is fairly second nature for you to sketch. And uh, hopefully you also know that um, it's it starts repeating at 2 pi and that it also it intersects the x-axis at pi. And then with that sketch, we have this area here, the area between 0 and pi that we're interested in. That's what's trapped um, by, by sine x and the x-axis. And then we're going to take that and we're going to rotate that around this line up here, y equals 3. And when we do that, we're going to have you know, some gap between the axis of rotation and that area. So that's going to form a hole in our solid. So that's one clue that we might want to use the washer method. And in fact, the next step is to decide on a method, but I've already told you that we're going to use the washer method, so we'll, we'll skip this decision for now. Um, we'll, we've decided to use the washer method, because I said so. <laughs> okay, so once you decide, um, it's a great idea to write down the formula for the method you're about to use. And the washer method formula is this. We take pi times the integral of the outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared. So this is the washer method formula anytime we're rotating around the x-axis or anything parallel to the x-axis. So in our problem we do have something parallel to the x-axis. We have this horizontal line y equals 3. So this is the right method for us. And what you'll notice is that there's some things that we need to fill in. We need to fill in the bounds of integration a and b and we need to find the this outer and inner radius. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Those are the next steps. So step three, let's find the bounds of integration, A and B. And in this problem, it's actually quite easy. It's pretty much done for us because we know uh, that sine intersects the x-axis at 0 and pi, and we're told we're only looking for the area between 0 and pi. And the lower and upper bounds are the leftmost point and the rightmost point of that area, so that's a is the leftmost point is 0, and B is the rightmost point, pi. Those are the leftmost and rightmost points of that trapped area. And that's just from knowing about sine of x and where it hits the x-axis. Okay, step four is find these radii. The outer radius, capital R of x, and the inner radius, lowercase r of x. And to do that, we're going to use the sketch, but uh, because this is an educational video, I actually am going to use a much bigger sketch so it's easier to see what's going on. Okay, so here we have, uh, what I've drawn is this line, y equals 3, and of course we have sine of x down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to pick some arbitrary x value, let's say x is here. And I'm going to draw a line from the axis of rotation through the area. So I'm almost thinking of this as going all the way through, like going this way. And the first, when it when it first enters the area, I'm going to mark that, and then when it exits that area, I'm going to mark that. Remember, the area we're talking about here is this area, this entire thing. So we've entered the area, I marked that, and then we've exited the area, so I've marked that. And what we're doing is we're imagine taking taking this line and rotating it around y equals 3. So we're going to have two radii here, and this is the inner radius. It's the inner radius. Why? Because, well, one, it's smaller than this entire yellow line, um, and also it's closer to the axis of rotation. That's one way to remember that. Now the outer radius we can think of as this whole, this entire line here from the axis of rotation to the point where it exits that area. 
That's the outer radius. And then there's one other bit we haven't labeled, which is here. This is actually sine x. That's the function, right? The distance from the x-axis out to the function. Okay, so with these with this uh, nicely labeled sketch, we actually can find our radii pretty easily. The outer radius is just the distance from the x-axis to the line y equals 3. Well, that's just 3, right? That's the constant 3 from the x-axis to the purple line y equals 3. Okay, what about the inner radius, little r of x? Well, to find that, it's like we can take that entire line that the entire distance um, from x-axis to y equals 3, that entire distance of 3. And if we just subtract this sine of x bit, what's left over is this inner radius. So that's exactly what we'll do. And I'll even color code it here. This is 3 minus sine x. Right? It's this entire distance to y equals 3 minus the function. That's what gives us this inner radius. Okay. So we figure that out with a nice sketch so let's go back here and label this so this is capital r of x was just the constant three and the inner radius the smaller one r of x was three minus sine x okay so with a nice enough sketch and just being kind of careful that also was fairly easy and now what's left to do is just plug in and solve And so let's go ahead and use the formula. We have the formula tells us it's going to be pi. Actually, I want to do this on, a, uh, sorry about that. So pi times the integral. So a is 0 and b is pi of the outer radius squared, which is 3 squared, oops, 3 squared, minus the inner radius, which is 3 minus sine x all squared dx. Okay, so um, that's basically the main part of the problem. We have now set up this integral. The rest of the problem is just busy work in solving this integral. And for this particular integral, I'm going to go through it slowly and show you all the steps, but that's going to take a while. It's going to take maybe twice as long as it took us just to set this up. So it really is busy work. The main, problem, the main part of the problem is over in terms of the washer method. We did all the right steps to set this integral up, and now we just have to do some busy work to, um, uh, to go through and actually solve this. All right, let's do that. So let me erase this stuff here. And now we're going to go through this, and uh, I'm not going to lie to you, it's going to be a little bit boring and a little bit tedious, but um, if you know how to solve this, then I just encourage you to do that on your own. Um, you don't even need to watch the video. But if any part of it trips you up, then we'll go through it in full. So, all right, first step, oops, that should be a pi up there. First step is just to uh, square everything out. So this is going to be 9 minus... And then if we FOIL this, we'll get 9 minus 6 sine x minus, uh, sorry, plus sine squared x dx. And now let's simplify by distributing, that, distributing the minus sign. And we have 9 minus 9, so that will cancel. And then we'll have minus minus 6x, so that's a positive 6 sine x, sorry, 6 sine x, and then we have a minus a positive sine squared, so that's going to be minus sine squared x dx. And now we can break this into two separate integrals, and I'm going to do a couple of steps here at the same time, just so this doesn't take too long. And I'm going to break this up as 6 pi integral from 0 to pi of sine x minus pi times the integral from 0 to pi of sine squared x. So what did I do? I just broke this into two separate integrals, this one and this one. And I also took this 6 out and put it with this pi. But for the other integral, there's no constant, so that pi just distributes directly to sine x. Okay, so basically split it into two integrals and pulled this 6 out. That's all I really did. Okay, so the left side is actually pretty easy. Integral of sine x is minus cos x, so this one should be clear. But this one takes a little bit of a trick, and what is that trick? Well, all you have to do is remember this identity 
that sine squared x, and in fact, I wasn't quite careful here, there should be an x there, sine squared x is equal to 1 half 1 minus cosine of 2x. And using that identity, which you really should memorize because it's helpful for integrals like this, we can, we can solve. So let's go ahead and, and do that. So I'm not going to integrate anything until the very end. We'll do that all at once. So let's continue simplifying this with this identity here. So this is going to become 1 half 1 minus cosine of 2x dx. And that's just using the identity in green on that sine squared inside the integral. Okay, let's do some more simplifying, but um, I'm starting to get kind of bored here, so I'm just going to switch to a different color just for fun. So 6 pi integral sine x. And then let's pull out this 1 half, so this is going to be pi over 2. And in fact, then let's also break up this 1 and this minus uh, cos, uh, cosine of 2x into two different in integrals. So this is going to be a minus pi times 1 half uh, uh, sorry, minus pi over 2 times 1, this integral with 1 in it, 1 dx, and then this minus pi times 1 half times minus cosine of 2 pi. So that's actually going to be a minus minus is going to give us a plus. So plus pi over 2 integral from 0 to pi of cosine of 2x dx. Okay, we're almost there. The very last step is to do a little tiny u sub on this 2x here. And um, and you might be able to do that in your head. And if you can, I, I encourage you to do so. If not, just do it on the side here. So we'll do u equals 2x, which means du is equal to 2dx. Divide by the 2, we get 1 half du equals dx. Okay, so now we can sub in this dx for this dx here and this the 2x for the u. And when we do that, what do we get? Well, let's see. We get 6 pi integral from 0 to pi sine x minus pi over 2 integral from 0 to pi of just 1 dx plus, now let's see, this dx becomes 1 half du, so why not just pull that 1 half out and make this pi over 4? And then integral, and then cosine of 2x becomes u, so cosine of u, and then that dx already became a du, where the 1 half we already pulled out. And now we have to do the bounds of integration. If we plug in 0 for x, we get 0 for u, because 2 times 0 is 0. And then if we plug in 0 for x, we get 2 times, oh, sorry, if we plug in pi for x, then we get 2 times pi is just 2 pi. Okay, and now we're finally, finally, finally ready to integrate. We've broken this down into three simple integrals that have three simple rules in order to solve them. And I'm going to switch colors again because I'm getting sick of this red, this red color here. So let's go to a green, and let's start integrating. So we have 6 pi, uh, and then the integral of sine of x is minus cosine of x. So this is minus cosine of x between 0 and pi. And then we have minus pi over 2 times the integral of 1 is just x, and that's between 0 and pi, plus pi over 4, and the integral of cosine is just sine. So this is sine of u between 0 and 2 pi. And now the last thing to do is just plug in and simplify the numbers. So let's go ahead and do that. This is 6 pi times minus cosine of pi minus minus cosine of 0. Right, so we plugged in pi, then we subtracted, plugged in 0. Okay, that's the first term. That's here. Now we got to do the next term. That's this. So let's see, then we have minus pi over 2 times pi minus 0. That's just plugging a pi and a 0 in there. And then finally we have this last term. So we have plus pi over 4 times, let's see, this is sine of pi over 2, or sorry, sorry, pi, uh, 2 pi minus sine of 0. 
Okay, let's start simplifying. So sine of 2 pi is 0, sine of 0 is 0, so this whole term is 0. Um, this term becomes pi squared over 2, minus pi squared over 2. And then what happens here? Cosine of pi is minus 1, so this is minus minus 1, so that's a positive 1. And then cosine of 0 is 1, so this is minus 1, minus minus 1, so that's another 1, so that's 2. So what do we end up with here? What's the total bill, so to speak? So we have 6 pi times 2, so that's 12 pi. And then we have minus, let's see, this is pi squared over 2 plus zero. So this is the final answer. And in fact we can simplify this by, by doing two by multiplying top and bottom by two pi. So this would give us twenty four pi squared over two minus pi squared over two, which is twenty three pi squared over two. So this is our final, final answer. Okay, so the takeaway from this video is really just how to set up this more advanced washer method um, and a tiny little reminder on just doing like a, an integral with sine squared using that trig identity and doing a very simple u sub. So a little bit of integration practice mixed in, um, but it really was setting up the integral in, the, in u sub. Okay, so in future videos we'll do shell method and then we'll go on to setting up these problems where we really have to decide is it disk, washer, or shell and doing them from start to finish. See you then.